Hey, what's up everybody? It's Simon here. And today we have a very special guest. It's Mr. Marco Miniman. Woo! Hey. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hello, Marco. I'm very happy that you came to visit uh, our studio. I'm very excited and I'm really honored. Really? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, likewise, really likewise. Yeah. It's a great time here. And we already kind of you know, shot a few very cool tracks and cool Ooh, things, you know. Yes, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I tried to get uh, past my jet lag, but uh, yeah. so I did, I You hope. did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Mark already mentioned, we already recorded a couple of his uh, songs out of his new album, My Sister. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look at these double CD packages. Ooh. It's actually one of those, but... <laughs> <laughs> the other ones are sold soon, if you buy them. If you don't know Marco, he is uh, currently on tour with his band The Aristocrats. He played with uh, Joe Satriani and Steven Wilson on his uh, The Raven Refused to Sing. Yep, and, uh, and also Hand Cannot Erase. All right. Hey! hey. <laughs> <laughs> Playing in all these kind of projects and then writing your own music. How do you manage everything and keep everything together? Do you still sleep? Well. Or, uh, well, you know, other people go to work and, uh, and I play music and write music. You know, the thing is, though, uh, people always think it's like, yeah, a lot of stuff that's coming out, you know, but on the other hand, you know, there is like a writing process. It's not that I'm, you know, uh, working day and night or something like that, but, you know, I, I work on songs all the time and once an album is done, it gets released, you know, but also when I get uh, calls for studio work, I can do this kind yeah. of uh, conveniently at home. I have That's my cool. home studio yeah. and so, you know, people send files and I'll play them and send them back. And so sometimes, you know, you can do a whole album in two days or something in two like day, that. Because you, know. you have the time, yeah. It, well, so, you know, yeah, because everything is already dialed in. You just yeah. kind of play the tracks, you punch in and all this kind of stuff. And then these albums are getting released and people think like, oh my gosh, there's like 20 albums he did this year. And you think like, well, yeah, but it's actually not that intense as people think, you know, it's like, you know how it is. And do you also write the music uh, besides your own uh, CD, like for the other bands, like Aristocrats yep. and uh, The Sea Within? And yes, or? exactly. We all write in those bands and everybody contributes music. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, and uh, with the Aristocrats, for example, we have this sort of rule uh, that um, we have nine songs on each album and each of us writes three songs. Oh, basically. Right, okay, yeah. And uh, uh, the writer also produces the songs. That's a habit. And then the same with the sea within, you know, everybody brought in mm -hmm. music. And then, you know, we, yeah, we kind of worked it out and then performed it. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah, it's a great it's idea, so, actually. So you yeah. have uh, every, I think every band member has his own kind of style of writing. Yeah. And then you combine everything into like the album. That's right. That means like it's like 30% or 33% of Yeah, you exactly that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So, ah, you know, but. How do you start writing your songs? Because you are also playing uh, guitar and mm -hmm. bass, and uh, you sing also, like yeah. on your on your recording. Yeah, yeah. And then you so, you work with a special guests that you invite that are. That's right. On this album, on for example. Own. Well, you know, usually kind of when I when I write, it, it comes either from the guitar, from a keyboard, you know, or from a lyrical aspect, and sometimes even from the drums. You know, even though you know people always think like, oh yeah, wait a minute, he's in the first place a drummer, which is actually not true because I mainly really write music, you know, but, you know, the, the drums are the instrument where I also appear live in different settings and okay, different yeah. studio projects a lot, but I also play, you know, keyboards and guitars in, in the studio for other people and all these kind of things. So oh, it's, okay. kind of, it's, it's kind of one of those things, you know, but when I write music, Especially in this album here, I was very, very happy because I started collaborating, you know, with like a few people there. Um, and it took like some time and actually Alex Lifeson from Rush really um, did a great job going on that album. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like a running gag. Like, I know, yeah. right? So I started Ding. working with him, you know, uh, and on this one song which is called Lover's Calling and we have two versions of that album, uh, on that album. And he co-wrote the song and uh, also co-produced it and uh, and he has like it's it's it was fantastic you know doing that with him and he kind of you know i took a page out of a out of his book so to speak you know because uh, when i write songs i'm pretty fast with that and i get to the results pretty quickly okay. and then i release them you know i kind of you know work on them and once they're done they're done and then they they appear on my album or something now alex was very 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 uh detailed you know he always went back and kind of you know did another guitar thing and then another guitar thing and then changed something up here and changed something up there 
And meanwhile, I was working on other songs while that whole thing happened. <laughs> but it, it totally inspired me because he took his time. It was not like, okay, the song is done, let's do it. No, he says like, well, the song is technically done, but let's make it as good as we really can. Mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, with this album especially, really took some time as well, you know, and I thought like, you know what, let's do the whole album that way. And I oh, kind right, of, you know, okay. picked like, you know, certain singers I thought that would fit to songs, certain guest artists, for, for example, Duck Pinnick from King's Axis on one of the songs as well and plays bass and sings. Um, like I said, Alex Liveson is on it. Then Aditi Singh Sharma, a very famous uh, uh, Bollywood singer, mm -hmm. actually. She's amazing um, um, from India. She's on here as well. Then Eva Catherine is on it. Uh, Adi Argelazi is on it. My friend Martin Trammell is on it. Then Mohini Day, also from India, amazing bass player. She's on it as well. So that was kind of cool. And, you know, usually on my albums I have a few guests, but mostly I do everything myself, right? Mm -hmm. I kind of really thought, like, hang on. For this one, I don't want to sing, I want to have a female vocal, so I want to have this kind of turn, I want to have that sort of vibe. And so I took my time and I thought, you know, that's one of, you know, without kind of trying to be self-indulgent or something, no, yeah. but I have to be happy with what I release, obviously, but I think that's maybe my best release so far. Uh, speaking of writing your own music, I really like to point out a song that is on the My Sister record. Mm -hmm. It's uh, called uh, White Sheets. Mm -hmm. And drumming wise, it's a really, really great song. It has a really, really great hook, actually. I still have it running through my mind. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the CD disagrees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And also there's a really, really, really great drum solo in it. And he just recorded this song here live in the Thomas Drumbash studio and I was blown away. When, you, when it comes to the, these uh, odd meter stuff, how do you p approach your drum soloing in that kind of um, situation? Well, you know, I, I try to count as little as possible, but kind of, you know, concentrate on the hook that's going on. Mm -hmm. For example, this one I wrote from, from the guitar. If I had a guitar, I would demonstrate it real quick, but it goes like... <laughs> so that's actually the verse, which is three times 11 sixteenth plus one two four bar, then again three times 11 sixteenth plus a 5-8 bar. And uh, then in the chorus, it is actually 1-4-4 four, four bar plus a 7-8 bar, which makes it 15-8. So yeah, but you know, that's, if I would count it, yeah, okay, that's a kind of a, you know, sort of mathematical exercise or yeah, whatnot, yeah. you know, which shouldn't be. So I kind of, you know, really concentrate on the melodies as I was mm -hmm. just singing. And I have those in my head when I play the drum solo over it. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit tricky on that one, because it sounds actually quite fluent and easy, but you have to kind of obey or always think like, oh, here comes the 2-4 insert, and oh, here comes the 5-8, you know, uh, and, you know, after those 11 6 scenes. And, um, but again, I'm not writing this, you know, to scare people or to make yeah, our lives yeah. difficult. Yeah. But uh, if the riff feels good, you know, that I came up with, and that's the riff I want, then this is what, what's coming out, you know. And um, it's not that every, every song on this album, for example, has, you know, sort of these rhythms or something. There are like songs like Falling Down, which I played here earlier, which is more like a straight forward, you know, kind of pop rock uh, song, almost like a quantized kind of emo pop kind yeah. of thing or something, or industrial or whatever you call it. And, uh, you know, there are songs like, for example, In the Moonlight or uh, Arrogance, you know, which are kind of very, you know, rock based or almost like Pink Floydish ambience like are, you know. So, but then again, yeah, there's white sheets or drum for your life, which are like, you know, also deliver, you know, the drum goods yeah, or okay. whatever you <laughs> want to say. <laughs> and we were talking like this afternoon about uh, you and your uh, drumming with the aristocrats and that you are uh, on, a, on tour a lot yeah. with, uh, with these guys. Do you have to prepare yourself mentally and physically for these kind of tours? No, not with the aristocrats. That's, uh, it feels actually very comfortable to be on the road, you know, with, uh, with my band there, actually. It's, uh, we are a trio and we have like a lot of dynamics, you know, like some songs, you know, are very intense and mm -hmm. they have a lot of things to offer. And some songs have even, even brushes or kind of, you know, really build up slowly and have like, right. you know, so we have like a dynamic circle going on there. So the, sh the shows are never really that exhausting with the aristocrats. We always try to make it very musical, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, make a good pace, you know, that nobody gets ear fatigued and stuff yeah. like that. And uh, plus we know each other very, very well. And each of us has like, you know, 
sort of the solo spots in the songs, or well, I do have a drum solo there, you know, but uh, also it is everybody's featured in certain bits and, and, and in certain songs. Uh, so it's actually, it's, it's almost like never work. It's always fun, you know, to play with those guys. I really gotta say. Yeah, so you should totally check out if they are near you and then go to one of the Aristocrats shows. Please come Very and nice check us man. out, dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and guys and gals. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we can talk a little bit about your equipment. Pit. Sure. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about your setup and your drums and your cymbals that you're using here in the Tomen Drummer Studio. Yes, very much so. So usually, <clears throat> well, it is close to what I play actually at home as well. And I love messing around a little bit, but you know, the basic setup always stays the same. So that's first of all the sizes. So let's start, you know, pretty much, you know, with a kick drum. I normally at home I have a 23-inch kick drum, believe it or not. Mm. But I sometimes also play 22 or 24 in this case. I do like the 24-inch more rock sound, you know, so it has like a lot of low end. And it's especially cool, like, you know, to get like a big difference, you know, in, in, uh, in frequencies, you know, between especially the snare drum, which is like, you know, the response to the kick drum. Low end, high end. Then for the mid-range, there are the toms, and I kind of you know, pick pretty much all the sizes you can imagine either way. It's like <laughs> from 8-inch to 10-inch, 12-inch, 16-inch, 18-inch, sometimes 14-inch, 16-inch. And then actually a 22-inch uh, gong drum, uh, which I usually use as a kick drum replacement or as a nice little, you know, uh, extra sound, you know, for you know certain low end bits, you know, that I'd like. What else? Snare drums. I usually actually have a uh, either way a Gretsch Brooklyn Steel or a uh, meanwhile a DW Brass they sent me for the Aristocrats tour, which is a 14 by six, I think, or by four, 14 by six and a half, and it sounds incredible. It's an incredible snare drum. Uh, for this tour right now, you know, I play actually a 14 by, it looks like a 14 by six and a yeah, half as well, doesn't yeah. it? This sounds fantastic too. And there's like, you know, the same thing as a 13 inch. So usually actually in my home setup, I use two 14 inch snares, one metal snare, mm -hmm. one wood snare. Um, pedal wise, I usually, I prefer the 5000s, uh, single or double chain, both fine. Um, and usually I play also like the 5000 Hyatt. Well, now we have the 9000, it sounds actually great. It, it works great as well. And the 9000 pedal. So both of those, you know, are cool. You know, whatever is put in front of me, I'm, I'm happy to play it, you know, <laughs> with that, you know. Now let's get actually to the cymbals, <laughs> which is <laughs> a complete surprise. Story. That's a very interesting <laughs> story, which is a complete surprise today, but actually a pleasant surprise. So I started actually playing, you know, the drum fest Zurich on this trip. And when I arrived from the States, my cymbal bag got stuck in Los Angeles and arrived literally 10 minutes before my show in Zurich. But the one thing is, first of all, they had all the cymbals there that I needed and one new one that I didn't know, which was actually the Zildjian Sweet Crash. I never tried it because I always try my cymbals I'm so used to. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is cool. You're coming with me. Is that okay? And they were like, yeah, for sure. We're Zildjian, you know, obviously. And I'm an endorser, so I was like, Thank you, guys. So I kind of took this, you know, and uh, with me, uh, I forgot my spare symbol anyway, so I integrated that into my symbol setup. And the same thing happens uh, happened today, because believe it or not, for the first time, I think, of uh, in my life of touring, the symbol bag got stuck a second time when I got actually here for the filming. The symbol bag is, as we speak, arriving at the hotel. So the fortunate thing was, well, the unfortunate thing was my symbols got lost again and showed up now at the hotel again, late. And uh, the good thing, the fortunate thing is, I again got to use new symbols that I haven't been using or didn't even know that they were out meanwhile, which is your symbol set. Mm. So thank you very much, Simon, for welcome. lending me those, which is actually, first of all, the Kiro series and then uh, the Cluster Crash. And uh, those are great. They're fantastic. You know, I was like, holy cow, this is really cool. Let's integrate them, right? And um, also, like, that Hyatt sounds pretty cool. Well, usually what I do at home, I play, like, a Vetus on that side, a 14-inch, and a K Hyatt on the right side, 14 inches as well. Then here I would have, actually, a Constantinople 20 medium thin. Then I would go for a, uh, what is it here then I have, like usually in a, in a Vetus, 18 inch, 
than uh, a dark crash, either way, 18 inch or 17 inch. And then I would play like a, a 20 inch, either way, custom right K or uh, the one thing that they built to me which uh, for me once which is a platinum symbol and it's like really cool they did like a whole run for me like two sets because they made them especially for me because once I was playing you know with this metal band creator and I wanted to have like a, uh, I did a live tour with them and it was cool and I, and I wanted to have a black drum set and completely silver cymbals Ooh. and so they made all of those they needed platinum alloy for that so right. I think it was an expensive run <laughs> but the one ride it was a few great cymbals but the one ride sounds amazing and uh, then I play like a 19 inch K uh, China and uh, yeah that's that for, and then I have to I have a, a 12 inch um, Avidus actually uh, a splash in the middle over here would, it would usually go and then two custom belts which are 8 inch right uh, for how long are you playing that kind of setup or do you like to experiment with like changing I toms used to experiment you know uh, changing toms and 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 cymbals and and setups uh, actually but meanwhile I'm pretty solid you know with what I want to hear sound wise okay so you know it's kind of you know, those two cable hi hats then you know double pedal then actually the gong drum is actually on the left side then there's a, a, what people always ask me about like why do you put the edge <laughs> yeah. over here you know but um, usually you know I kind of you know play you know in that range instead of kind of always going in this mm -hmm. direction so I kind of you know I like the bigger toms in front of me so the 10 and the 12 and then you know here the 16 and the 18 and then there's like the 22 feels very comfortable and this is more like you know a special little gadget you know where I kind of you know just do like you know certain grooves when I'm kind of you know play like you know something open-handed you know on the eight inch tom between the snare and the eight inch I guess you know that kind of stuff and the kick drum so to form a groove but also the very first time I came up with that was out of necessity because I had a third hi-hat over here which was a little eight inch hi-hat which I kind of at some point let go because I really didn't need it and it was kind of too much a little bit and and to get it a little closer I put the eight inch tom over there all right and then I started liking it. I thought like, hey, this, is, this became actually kind of cool. Yeah, drum heads wise, it's usually my Evan, the Evans thing. I use the E-mat, you know, on the kick drum and on the gong drum. Then the G2 is clear on the toms. Yeah, and the power reverse dot or the ST heads on the snares. Pro Mark sticks, which are the 721s, Marco Miniman model. Uh, Pick them up so I can make more money of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Before we say goodbye, I'd like to uh, give you one last question. Mm -hmm. It was uh, sent over by Guillaume. Hey, Guillaume. Hey, G. Hi, Guillaume. And he <laughs> asks, um, what's your approach with the aristocrats to write such complex music or, or time signatures while maintaining the hook? Well, you know, the thing is, first of all, I don't, and I think I can speak for the others there as well in the band, I think we don't purposely write it to be complex, you know. It's really about like, you know, the melody and uh, so when the hook comes first, and it's the same with White Sheets from the album that you mentioned or certain songs, mm. the hook comes first and when I think it's beautiful and then it happens to be an odd meter, then so be it, you know, but it's not like, you know, that we're sitting there and going like, you know, cool, let's confuse <laughs> people and ourselves and then learn it and impress everyone. That's really not the case, you know. But yeah, we do have certain songs, you know, that are kind of tailored, you know, a little bit that way to make fun. For example, yeah. the song is, which is called Blues Fuckers, yes, I said it, <laughs> uh, which has like, you know, is a song that I wrote, which has like a lot of odd meter signatures, but it was just like, you know, designed to lovingly mess with the blues or something, you know, to make, you know, fun of certain blues, cl blues cliches, but in a, in a you know, in a, in a fun way, you know, not, not to be being disrespectful, just to having, you know, a little fun with things. And, um, but, you know, on the new album, for example, well, yeah, there is a song that I wrote, which is called uh, When We All Come Together, which is a more like countryish kind of thing that goes into also some metal parts and then some, you know, witty things where there's like a 23 16th. But that's like, you know, always like, you know, certain fills that happen and they just <laughs> appear to be 23 16th. I counted it out, <laughs> what I had in my head. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that's usually how that happens, but we never try to kind of, you know, uh, be purposely math rock or something yeah. like that. You know, we always kind of make sure that people are getting entertained by the melody as well, and that people go home humming a song or kind of digging a song because of 
the hook, you know, as you said, you know, instead of just confusing them. With the aristocrats, we attract a crowd, you know, who is actually really enthusiastic about the music as well. And they sometimes sing along the hooks and the melodies. Uh, and that is actually kind of a wonderful thing to, to see. So that was the long, question, uh, long yeah, answer for the question. <laughs> But yeah, we don't we don't purposely try to kind of make it make cool. people's lives hard, well, you know. <laughs> well, Marco, thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, thank you kindly. And, uh, How about the water and the wine question? Yeah, was, you want to ask it? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Huh? Uh, I heard a question actually yeah. you know, that that we kind of forgot almost. It was the same guy, Guillaume. It was right? the same guy. Yeah, uh, same guy. he's a guitar player, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. It was a question from my guitar player Guthrie, right? Who's an amazing guitar player, and he has like these long hair and the beard and stuff like that, and. And he's great at what he does, you know. And so the question was, I guess, like, hey, did uh, did you uh, did you see Guthrie ever turning water into, water wine, into yeah. wine? And the funniest thing is, like, we just had actually Guthrie and I. We had a discussion about like you know religion and all this kind of stuff, right? You know, and we we don't really read the Bible, and we're not really religious people, you know. We just made fun of a little bit of kind of stuff, and I said like, yeah, it was like this kind of chapter. Remember, like I said, like when. Jesus turned water into wine. And then Guthrie looks at me and goes like, yeah, if it would, if it would be the other way around, he wouldn't be that popular. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> there you go. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Buy my new albums. Yeah. Yay. As a special gimmick, uh, write down a comment in oh, yeah. the comment section right. and you have the chance to win one of the uh, Marco and My Sister double... CD, right? Absolutely. And the copy of uh, Alex Liveson. Yeah, it's uh, a very limited edition. I literally have a few more left in this world because most of them got sold on tour and I kept actually two boxes for Europe and for Asia and for Latin America where I take like literally a quantity of 30 or something to each <laughs> to each continent now so they get sold because everybody, a lot of people, you know, wanted them. Both of these tracks are also on the My Sister album. Yeah. Marco, thank you very much thank you for stopping me. by. It was a real pleasure <laughs> oh, to meet you here. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you won't, out, uh, you won't miss out on new videos. You can find Marco on all social media platforms. It's uh, at Marco Miniman, right? Yeah, it's, it's MarcoMiniman.com. Uh, you know, find me there. And that's also my Instagram name and my Facebook name. Look for the verified blue badge. That's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go out, visit him on uh, on his upcoming tour with the Aristocrats. He's yeah. touring whole Europe. Listen to his music. He's a mind-blowing drummer. I really enjoyed this day today with you, Marco. Oh, It was thank my you, pleasure. Kendrick. And uh, I see you next time. Bye-bye. Signing off. Bye. <laughs>